school or you're new but you had it mixed up but we're going to share up that with you tonight so let me welcome my special guest tonight um uh since we have a young lady uh with us tonight could you tell us your name and a little bit about yourself good night pastor good night <laughs> Yes, um, good night everyone and happy Sabbath. My name is Shelian Lewis. I um, attend Richmond SDA Church. I also work as a counselor at the Grenada Boys Secondary School. And I'm glad to be here tonight. Right. Thank you very much, Shelian. That's your first time? Yes. First time. You, you, you know us? <laughs> Be honest, be honest. Yeah, that's all, that's all, right. all, that's well, relax. That's how we do it on Adventist Youth Life. And there's always a first time, yeah? Always a first time. Just relax. And, and everybody here is a family, you know? The guys who are you know, those who are viewing, they're a family with us. So, you know, relax and enjoy yourself, yeah? Right? Ooh, the next the next gentleman on your on your side. Um, it's a little while I haven't seen him. Tell us, tell us, introduce yourself. Uh, good night, everybody. I'm Frankie Noel. I attend St. George's SD Church. And I'm happy to be here again. All right, Frankie. Well, a familiar face on Adventist Youth Live, yeah? Familiar face on Adventist Youth Live. All right? Um, so we're glad to have both of you tonight, as you share. And we have another special guest, um, Justin. A, He's going to be with us in a while, you know. Um, we're going to hear more of him in a while, and together we're going to share. Um, but let me just say, um, let's let's see if we could talk a little bit about what's happening um, around the conference, around the conference, and maybe we will sing one more hymn, and by that time we should be, you know, everything should be normal and settled so that we can get into it, right? So we're going to sing another hymn. But let me say, um, tell you what is going on in the conference on uh, Sunday, Sunday coming. That's the 8th of December. Um, it's investiture service. You hold investiture service, the youth department, um, marshaled there by Pastor Bernard Lyons and Pastor Jimmy Gordon. Um, they're going to be bringing all the young people, the uniform clubs together at Progress Park, yeah? At Progress Park for 1 o'clock. At 1 o'clock. And it's going to be an evening, an afternoon rather, of, of awards and ceremonies and, and, um, drill down and drill display, jump display and investiture is going to be a wonderful, you heard about it, you, you got to be there. So all roads lead to Progress Park on Sunday um, for that national investiture, it's an afternoon where the young people will be showcased. So we want to invite all of you, uh, members, young people, bring the young people, you organize your transport, I know that you have done that already but you need to make sure you crystallize that so that nobody's left behind, alright? And of course we are inviting our friends um, you also can join us um, also tomorrow please God um, on the brighter side of the Sabbath bright side of the Sabbath um, is gonna be a special day at Paradise SD Church Paradise is located in the central area of the island yeah Paradise Church is quiet day Choir day, right? We're going to be having a number of choirs and special music and string instruments and so on. They're going to be having a wonderful time there at Paradise, you know? I'm, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. I can't stay because <laughs> I have a few things to do in a few churches tomorrow. But I'm going to pass to take in a little bit of the thing. you got to make sure that you, you know, uh, uh, catch some of the action there at Paradise SD Church. And then... Um, Finally, um, next week's sab Sabbath afternoon at 3.30 at Grenville Church, all the elders and prayer team ministry leaders in the local churches, you have a special meeting at the Grenville Church with the uh, prayer coordinator of the conference at Pastor Oliver Scott. So we want you to remember that for next Sabbath, all right? Okay, let's, let's, sing, let's sing maybe one hymn and then we can move on because we have to cut it short tonight because we want to get into the topic that we're going to be discussing. So let's use 183 for uh, Rosalind Jeffers McCoy, all right? Thank you very much. Uh, 183, 183, I will sing of Jesus' love, right? 183, the first and the last stanzas. <clears throat> Oh uh -huh. 
wonderful, wonderful tonight. Let, let, we, we, we're going to do one more. We're going to do one more. <laughs> Folks, we've got to cut it short tonight, but we're going to just do one more. We uh, started the program. We had a technical difficulty, so that consumed some of our time. But we want to get into the meat of the matter. We hope you understand, right? Stay with us as we enjoy Adventist Youth Life coming to you from the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Let's take uh, 515 for Vicky Kato. Uh, Vicky Kato 515, the Lord is my light. The first and the last stanzas. That will be our final one this evening. And we're going to go quickly into our quiz. And uh, by that time, we should be really settled so that we can get into the meat of the matter tonight. All right? 515. tonight or praise section tonight um, at this time we're going to take a special item of music and then when we come back I'll introduce uh, another special guest tonight and then we're going to move straight into our discussion tonight all right so at this time we're going to have a special item of music we hope that you enjoy remember to like and to share the page um, as we enjoy Adventist Youth Life together I wrote this song it's called Lord Take It All. No matter what we face, we serve a God who is more than able to deliver us and to set us free. All we need to do is to give Him our worries. God is great and He's mighty. There's nothing He cannot do. Like this. Sometimes I'm discouraged. Sometimes I am weary, oh Lord. Sometimes I am not myself. Sometimes I am down. But I know my Jesus. He is looking out for me, yes Lord, I'm going to give you all my pain, I'm going to cast it on him, so Lord take it all, take all of my pain, I surrender all. I surrender all, all of my shame. God, you are good. Lord, you are God. God, you are good. Lord, you are God. So I surrender all. Satan is a liar. He's the great deceiver. Uh -uh. 
He's coming after you. So let me tell you what to do. Surrender to Jesus. Call upon his mighty name. He will save you. There's nothing he can do. So, Lord, take it all. Take it all. Take all of my pain. I surrender all, I surrender all, all of my shame. God, you are good, Lord, you are God. God, you are good, Lord, you are God. So I surrender all. Jesus is coming soon. Trumpets will sound People be ready To be in that city No more pain, no more sorrow A brighter tomorrow I can't wait Father, so Lord, take it all, take it all, take all of my pain. I surrender all, I surrender all, all of my shame. God, you are good, Lord, you are God, God, you are good. Lord, you are God, so I surrender all. So, Lord, take it all, take it all, take all of my pain. I surrender all, I surrender all, all of my shame. God, you are good. Lord, you are God. God, you are good. Lord, you are God. So I surrender all. God, you are good. Lord, you are God. God, you are good. Lord, you are God. So I surrender all. God, you are good. Lord, you are God. God, you are good. Lord, you are God. So I surrender all. Thank you very much. And uh, that was certainly a wonderful item of music by Brother Kellon George. Lord, take it all. Lord, take it all. And I think that is a fitting uh, item for what we are discussing. Well, let's get to it, folks, because um, we want to we want to talk tonight. Um, tonight we are looking at the topic pornography. Pornography. Wow, that's that's a big topic. Come, come, guys. That's a, that's a heavy topic. You know, are you ready for this? Well, um, let let me introduce uh, our special guest, additional guest tonight, a man of um, great experience. Um, he's no stranger to Adventist Youth Live. Um, tell us, tell us who you are and, and, and what you do, mm -hmm. and, and so on. Just good night, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. Um, my name is Claude Douglas. Um, lecturer in sociology, uh, chair of the social sciences department at the TJ Marshall Community College, and also the first elder of the Paradise at CH Church. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's some of the things you do. Some of the some, things. There's a number of things yeah. that I would not go in yeah. the audience with a lot of stuff. But um, So I also work with children. I'm Deputy Chair of the Child Protection Authority, okay. Board of Directors. Mm -hmm. um, a number of other committees that I used to tell, but it's a long, long list. Mm -hmm. So I would not uh, venture to go into them. But um, 
the most important thing he said that um, I'm in church serving mm -hmm. the best way I can. Yeah. All right, and working with young people, I love working with young people throughout the length and breadth of this you know, uh, Grenada conference. Yeah. Ella Douglas, thank you very much for joining us tonight on Adventist Youth Live. Mm -hmm. And the topic that we are looking at, you see we have two young persons across mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. they needed some backup, you know. Mm -hmm. They need some backup. So we are glad to have you um, tonight sharing with us. Pornography, it's not a it's not a very easy topic, but it's a it's a it's a it's a growing problem, a growing challenge among our young people. And adults too, eh? But um, it's Adventist youth life. <laughs> so we, 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 we sometimes zero in or focus on the young people. Yeah. Right? Um, frankly, you think it's a problem? You think it's a, it's a, it's a growing challenge? It is. Um, it it is. is. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to talk about that. So listen to this. Um, we want to say good night to um, Barbara St. Louis. She says good night, everyone. Um, was not hearing, but we, I think we rectify that, that challenge now. So I think we're back on stream right as i said we have a for those of you who've just joined us we had a technical difficulty but i think we sort out that now um hisland henry says happy sabbath ricardo petro says um he says pornography is a scene of the of part <laughs> this guy gone right we're going to talk about that the panel is going to help us yeah um anderson felix is watching thank you very much um theodora lashington she says good night child Chad. Chad Coleman, Dalisha is there, and um, the list goes on. We're going to interact with you. We want to hear your comments, so you're going to share your comments with us as we go on on Adventist Youth Live, right? Mag with Mac just join us. We're very happy to have you. So here, 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 here is it. Here is it as we come. By way of introduction, closing the bedroom door behind him. I want you to listen a little bit. Closing the bedroom door behind him. <laughs> Brad sat down at his computer and checked his email. As he read his messages, his fingers moved slightly over the mouse, as if wondering what to do next. Of course, he knew what he was going to do next. He switched from his email program to his web browser. Maybe tonight he wouldn't. Maybe he just download some music to listen to or something. But the temptation was too strong to resist. He surfed over to his favorite site. A large warning screen told him he had to be 18 years or older to enter. Brad was only 16. But the computer had no way of knowing that. Soon, he was lost in a world of graphic images of nude women and couples in sexual position. Oh, did I say that? I was <laughs> His heart raced faster as he, as he bent closer to the screen. A link on one of the pages offered to take, to take him to a live chat room where he could chat with models like the girls in the pictures he hesitated over the link for a moment. Peter's were wanting, but live chat was taking it a whole new level. It was scary, but almost irresistible. That's just a scenario that sometimes a lot of young people encounter and face. Pornography. That's what we are talking about tonight. What is pornography? What is pornography? Let's define pornography. What is pornography? Well, it is generally defined as, you know, explicit, sexually explicit material um, that is intended um, to cause um, arousal, sexual arousal in mm -hmm. individuals. Mm -hmm. so that's basically the intention. Mm -hmm. um, you can have images, you can have text, they come in varied forms, mm -hmm. but the intended purpose mm -hmm. is really to arouse individuals sexually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yes, Kelly? Well, I agree with that definition. I also would like to add the history of behind pornography, the word itself, because mm -hmm. porno has to do, porn refers to the narrative of prostitutes, 
because in historical times, prostitutes, in order to advertise their wares, use enticing words, mm -hmm. right, to illustrate their physical acts. Mm -hmm. And graphy refers to illustrations. Mm -hmm. And as Brother Douglas explained, all of it is to entice mm -hmm. sexual anticipation, mm -hmm. right, and to invite the person into something that's going to be satisfying to their fantasies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, extra. We are talking about farms. Um, you mentioned our very farms. Mm -hmm. um, what are the farms they come in? Pornography. Um, these explicit <laughs> pictures and so on. Um, tell us because I mean we have we have to we have to come down. You know we have to let our young people know and people be. These are real struggle. It's a real struggle. Mm -hmm. What are the farms? Frankly, you know of some um, books. Videos, but books people still use. You still yeah. find it in books, yeah. magazines, magazines. Yeah. magazines. Yeah. Yeah. They have it, those erotic books too. Yes. Books. Uh -huh. um, pictures, videos. Yeah. Movies, cartoons, animations. Uh, cartoons too. Japanese animation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Very illustrative. A lot of young mm. boys in particular are attracted to the cartoon aspect of pornography. Very oh. graphic and detailed. So it's it's all over. It's, it's right, all it? over. It's easily accessible. Yeah. It's even in the movies. Mm -hmm. It's in the right. We click mm -hmm. on local channel and we'll see um, not just a whole pornographic movie, but um, pictures mm -hmm. and acts mm -hmm. depicting yeah. pornographic mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's all around us. It's a sex crazed world we live in. It. Right. Yeah. So so Frankie, as a young man, do you think that's a problem for young people? Yes, boss. Why 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 you say that? Um, it could be distracting, mm -hmm. uh, and any addiction. Mm -hmm. But once uh, it it becomes a problem where you can't do your normal functions because of it, mm -hmm. and you can't do your day to day basics or any function because of that addiction, mm -hmm. then it's definitely a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. Douglas, you think as a, as a sociologist, you are on the ground. You think that's that's the problem. Young people, and it's a huge problem. Huge problem. A huge problem. Um, confronting a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. You know, as the sister said, we live in a sex crazed world. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, um, sexual appetite basically is bet. Mm -hmm. You understand know, me by by these things, and then um, social access. You know, technology has exponentially, mm -hmm. you know, increased, mm -hmm. you know, um, people's access to, to, to pornography, you know, um, as a boy growing up, you know, we, we had magazines, only the magazines, mm -hmm. Playboy and what have you, mm -hmm. but now you have um, images, live images, mm -hmm. you know, through the internet and what have you, mm -hmm. um, so this increase in social access, basically, um, means that there is an overwhelming amount, you know, of, um, of porn um, images and all of those things that people can easily easily access, access yeah. yeah and i think accessibility is key mm -hmm. um you can be just be casually looking at um, a movie mm -hmm. and then as your sister right they say you see excerpts mm -hmm. you know of it you know um and you know long time needs to be late at night but <laughs> daylight hours right through it's yeah because there, there is what we call a normalization of mm -hmm. these things you know people think that it is it is normal you know sex you know and, and, and pornography basically um, can be shown at, shown at any time and what have you mm -hmm. and people must be uh, morally responsible and um, in, in deciding whether or not they should look at it and what have you you know, but we discuss that a little further later on. Uh, yes. yeah. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Remember to like and share the page, and of course, you can send in your your comments also. We want to hear from you. Um, we glad that um, Joy Hockley is uh, is watching. Um, um, Trisha Jones William, good night. She says good night and happy Sabbath. We're very happy. Uh, Sheena Williams is there. Deb Fortune um, is there. Deborah Trim is there. Very nice. Uh, Sheldon Mason. That's my um, brother. Your, your, your brother? In Trinidad. Well, yes. tell him hi. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say hi, brother, big brother. My, all so, my siblings, hello. Happy summer. So all of them are watching? Yes, hey, and remember, my family at home. Your family at home and everybody. Yes, right? yes. Remember to like and share the page because you guys are an <laughs> integral part of this ministry <laughs> and what we're talking about tonight, right? So um, make sure that you like and share the page, right? <laughs> and send in your comments. Um, <laughs> Um, Tiorona says pornography is addictive and can be a lifelong battle to overcome, especially since it is secret sin. <laughs> secret sin, right? Um, 
thank you, thank you very much for your for your um, your your comments. Yeah, um, some stats, some stats. Um, the it was reported in 2016. Um, a survey, as reported by BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, um, based on 101 teenagers that were interviewed. Not 101. Did I say 101? 1,001. Mm -hmm. Right? 1,001, frankly. That's a lot of teenagers. Yeah? Right. About 53% of 11 to 16-year-olds have seen explicit materials online. Nearly all of whom, 94%, had seen it by age 14. You listening now? Right, let me go on. The research said many teenagers were at risk of becoming desen desensitized mm -hmm. to porn. Right, becoming desensitized to porn. The research shows the researchers questioned 1,001 children aged 6, 11 to 16 and found 65% of 15 to 16 year olds reported seeing pornography and did as did 28% of 11 to 12 year olds. It was more likely for the teenagers or the youngsters to find materials accidentally, for example via a pop-up advertisement than to specifically seek it out. Does that have some, you know, mm -hmm. bearing? Another one, some of the children approach to sex was also informed by pornographic scenes. Come we talking some things, mm -hmm. you know, by pornographic scenes with more than a third, or that's 39% of the 13 to 14 year olds and 20% of the 11 to 12 year old boys saying they wanted to copy the behavior they had seen. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. More boys than girls had viewed online pornography through choice. Mm -hmm. And let me give you just a little bit more. 135 of those interviewed, of the young people interviewed, um, who responded had taken naked and or semi-naked images of themselves. And just over half of these had shared these images. Come, your reaction to these stats? I mean, it's a bundle, but your reaction? Um, what I must say is that I think per capita, mm -hmm. wherever you do research and, and pornography, um, will yield, you know, almost the same results. Mm -hmm. All right, um, as I said, um, especially dealing with um, that particular age group, adolescents, you know, where there is this. Um, increased, you know, certainly, um, means of, of experimentation, you mm -hmm. know, people want to experiment, um, curiosity, mm -hmm. people are becoming more curious, mm -hmm. and um, also in terms of peer influence, mm -hmm. you know, someone looking at it and, and sharing the experience with others, that other person may also want to, you know, um, engage in such a practice and what have you. Okay, um, so the, the research basically there and it's important for us to, to inform us as to exactly what is happening. Mm -hmm. um, also to, I must add to that research, especially in the United States, and it's a worldwide, worldwide um, estimation that the, the pornography industry is a hundred billion dollar industry. Wow. Right now. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's, it's not something it's not likely that yeah. we are, are not something small. Not, not something small. Not no. something big thing. It's a big thing. Yes. It's a really, really big thing. Big really, thing. really big thing. Right. So um, when when our youth basically are confronted, you know, with such, you know, we, we have to have programs like these, you mm -hmm. know, public education programs. Mm -hmm. um, we have to have um, a lot of other um, interventions, yes. you know, and, and the counselors here, can, the counselor here maybe can speak to that, you know, with more efficiency and, and, and effectiveness right. in terms of the intervention. What can we do? We'll get to that point. Mm -hmm. But what can we do basically to reduce the incidence, yeah. you know, the rising incidence mm -hmm. of, of pornography and, and, and what have you in our society? Um, I'll come back to you. Let, yeah. let, let me, we'll talk a little bit about the activity. Let me, let me hear our online viewer says, mm -hmm. Emma Marie Mason is there. She mm -hmm. said, blessing. Mm -hmm. um, Debbie Trim says she agrees with Terona, I'm saying, it's addictive. Um, Barbara Benford said, happy Sabbath. Um, 
Chadwick um, returns. He says, pornography often leads to masturbation, <laughs> which is a selfish act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is a selfish act. So the boy is touching some issues here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sarana English is there. She says, well, she says, um, Sister Mason says, unsupervised internet browsing by youngsters compounds the issue. Yeah. Yes. Unsupervised. Mm -hmm. We talk, I think, the, the, uh, some of the stars, the pop-up and thing, yeah. and I think you mentioned yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Children watching these mm -hmm. shows, you talk about cartoons all year on. Yes. And, and <laughs> they access it to Japanese. Innocent. Yeah. Yeah. And those things just pop up, you know? And Mr. And Moderate, click on it. Mr. Moderator, before you go further, mm -hmm. um, especially cartoons, yeah? um, mm -hmm. cartoons basically are uh, used now, you know, as a medium mm -hmm. um, through which it's not only pornography, but even homosexuality, oh. all right, is promoted a lot through the cartoons. So parents have to be very careful mm -hmm. with what their children look at these days because they want to appeal, you know, to the children at a very tender age. So growing up so that they basically can have that, that, that revolution, mm -hmm. you know, I call it a revolution where um, and, and, um, people can become desensitized, yeah. you know, people can become normalized to those things. So um, for some people, basically, it will be a normal activity to do that. There is nothing wrong. And, and some people will argue that, mm -hmm. that there is nothing wrong in, in doing that, in, in engaging in sexual fantasy mm -hmm. and fantasies and what have you and so forth. But they want to, they want to act, um, target the young people. Mm -hmm. And they know the younger you are, the more impressionable your mind mm -hmm. will be, you know, in terms of learning. And, 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 and grasping ideas and so forth. So that I just wanted to expound a little bit on the cartoons yeah. as being used as a medium to advance those things. Mm -hmm. Also, right. maybe you. if I could add. Mm -hmm. Let, right. before, you, before you add, um, I just want to interact with um, Sharon Duncan is, is there. Uh, Donish James is watching. We, we like when our viewers, you know, remember to like and share the page and weigh in on the matter. Trisha Jones says, um, William says, it's not widely known but most of the cartoon children watch have pornographic images mm -hmm. in them. You want to yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the adults may not see them, but these things are placed there to enter the subconscious mind of the children. Yeah. Wow. You know? And um, um, Atkins Prophet, we thank you very much um, for joining us tonight. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm Shirley and you are saying. Right. If I if I would like to add, mm -hmm. uh, one of our viewers mentioned masturbation because mm -hmm. pornography and masturbation goes hand in hand. Okay. We can't talk one without the other mm -hmm. because that is what reinforces the behavior pattern, the addiction. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, even looking at the term addiction itself. Yes. Because that's my next question. I wanted <laughs> to hear about the addiction. Can mm -hmm. pornography be add, um, add, addict? Uh, it, can it, be yes, it become it, an yes, addiction? Yes, yes, it, it can become an addiction. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand the biological drive of addiction. Mm -hmm. Because before in the past, whenever someone admitted they're addicted to someone um, to something, if it's gambling or um, sex, pornography, and all these things, society view them as lacking in morals, they don't have willpower, but it's more than that. Um, becoming addicted to something has to do with the reward center of the brain. Mm -hmm. Yes, Frankie? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, I'll let you speak more on that part. But what I understand from it is, there's a part of the brain, the reward center, which is just below the cerebral mm -hmm. cortex, you mm -hmm. correct me, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And it comprises of these three parts, which are the Encompass, nucleus encompass, mm -hmm. right? Um, the hippocampus and the amygdala. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And these three, that's the reward center in the brain. Mm -hmm. Now, the nucleus encompass produces dopamine, a neurotransmitter. Whenever we, for example, when you eat food and you feel that pleasure, that satisfaction that you feel, dopamine is released. Mm -hmm. Right? And when that is released now, the hippocampus store that memory of that satisfaction that you feel mm -hmm. after you eat food, or even after you have sex and have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. Yes? It stores that memory. Mm -hmm. And the amygdala right, conditions the individual. So keep doing it, and you'll keep getting that oh. satisfaction. Mm -hmm. You'll keep getting that pleasure. Mm -hmm. right? And because of that neurological process mm -hmm. that reinforces the behavior where someone now, they feel like, okay, I don't want to watch it, but that compulsion, that hmm. drive, I'm, I'm, okay, I'll just click on it, mm -hmm. yes? And then they watch it, they lose control. 
Then afterwards, when they stop watching now, there's that withdrawal symptom. Mm -hmm. You notice it's almost similar to a drug addict, mm -hmm. yeah. being addicted to drugs. Mm -hmm. So addiction now, recent research is showing that it's a disease, mm. right? Due to the biological process that takes place, mm -hmm. that hooks the individual. Mm -hmm. And just as a habit, in order for a habit to be broken, you have to recondition, mm -hmm. yes? Mm -hmm. That biological urge, mm -hmm. that process to, to always want to go at it. So I always want to be addicted to porn. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to porn, then I'm ashamed after. Mm -hmm. Most persons who are addicted are ashamed because there's a shame closet attached to pornography addiction. Right. Let me let me let me bring in Frankie add <laughs> <or> someone <laughs> on, on about this addiction because I think you mentioned earlier. And so tell us a little more Frankie about you know the, the addiction. You think um, persons can be addicted to it? You you share that same that same sentiment? Yes, and um, talking from the what you were saying with the, the biological aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, we're creatures of habits, so if you make it a habit, you won't want to, to do it again. Mm -hmm. um, if you start making your bed every morning, after a while it's going to become natural to, to just start mm -hmm. making your bed, because we, we condition our, ourselves like that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, but, but, but Frankie, let, let, me, let, me, let me ask you. I mean, I'm just doing the first time, I'm just, just mm -hmm. once. <laughs> I just click to just watch once. Right, and so it's kind of with the adrenaline, the adrenaline mm -hmm. rush at first too, mm -hmm. you know? Um, the first time you, you, you jump in the neighbor, you have to take the mango. Mm -hmm. that, that adrenaline rush, mm -hmm. you know? You, you have your partners looking out, watching out for you. That excitement, you know, mommy not there, whatever, the door closed. You, you're in that moment, your, your hormones heighten, your senses heighten. Mm -hmm. That feeling, that rush, everything is going to be stored. Mm -hmm. So when time to do it again, that excitement, everything is going to come back again. Mm -hmm. So Because you, you know what you're doing is, is wrong. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why you're hiding it in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes. uh, that, that feeling, that excitement, that adrenaline, yeah. That's All right. Oh, become so, addictive. Right. So it's, it's, it's a real serious, real this serious problem. This is a serious problem. Very serious. Mm -hmm. Right. Very serious. Let, let me just hear. Um, um, Rachel Jerome Graham says, I have, I have I've heard of subliminal images incorporated into cartoons. Very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that's one of our viewers. Janet, thank you for watching. Remember to like and share the page. Um, Trisha Williams says there are people in church who who can have addictions to various things, including pornography yeah. in church. Yes. That's why we are here. I mean, yes. it's not something that people easily want to talk about. But on you live, we touch the issues. Now. <laughs> this is one of what we're going to talk tonight. Um, Sylvanus is there. Wendy Gill is there. Um, Jerome says very, very true. Right. So let's continue. Um, um, what signs, <laughs> signs that somebody is, you know, what are some of the signs that can be detected that's, um, from someone who is addicted to pornography? Can we, mm -hmm. can we see some signs, external signs or some behavioral patterns of someone who is mm -hmm. either watching, <laughs> and we just started, or mm -hmm. addicted to? Right. How can we help parents? How can we help some of us as leaders? Mm -hmm. Um, because we see people and they're addicted to those things, they cry out for help, and sometimes we go, we we look at those signs and we we we, we cast a blind eye, or we may conclude that it's something else. Mm -hmm. Wait, can you help us there, or help me too? Every every addiction, mm -hmm. whether it's alcohol, drugs, or sex, they all have symptoms. They mm -hmm. all have signs, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are associated with those addictions, mm -hmm. right? Um, one's preoccupation you know um with sexually explicit material you know the person um find it difficult to resist that urge you know um, and, and that was explained in terms of the the brain function you know um, the reward center and what have you um also the person's time um, with other family members friends and what have you Mm -hmm. might be reduced significantly mm -hmm. right because that person wants to be alone you know and as Frankie said that if we are engaged in, in, in something that might be shameful to us um, we want to be alone we want to engage in, a, in that, that activity by ourselves mm -hmm. because we don't want others to know that we are engaged in such mm -hmm. uh, privacy, privacy all the time. you want privacy all the time okay. so yes yeah, so if somebody is seeking that privacy all the time want to be alone you know, the room door is locked, you know, all the time. So these are things that parents basically 
um, can look at, right? And um, even 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 with the workplace, because um, there are people who might you know uh, run into difficulties in the workplace again because what it does is that it reduces on the amount of time that you will spend in productive. And I want to re-emphasize you know the point this point in productive activities. Mm -hmm. So why they should be doing the people's job? You know, suddenly you are engaged, you may be on the computer um, with that. So there's this compulsion, you know, that you find it really difficult to, um, to resist that. You know, and once, once that is happening, and, um, parents need basically to, to, to put up a flag. Mm -hmm. in, a, in addition, in addition mm -hmm. because it, it varies, mm -hmm. right? For a married couple, mm -hmm. yes, one spouse will notice signs. Yeah, your spouse no longer feel sexually attracted Definitely. to you. Definitely. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. you find that they're always online mm -hmm. late in the night. They get up, mm -hmm. leave you in the bed, and they go online, mm -hmm. right? Closet themselves. So and then when and they go to do some work. I mean. well, yeah, yes, it could be that. Right. But if it, is, yes, if it is, you get yeah. up and inquire, yeah. and all of a sudden the screen disappears. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and they're trying to hide mm -hmm. things from you. Yeah. Then there's something happening there. Something. Yes, they spend a lot of time on their phone. There's all kind of devices, mm -hmm. whatever they're using, mm -hmm. right? Um, also, to um, even for married couples, the the whole sexual intimacy is affected mm -hmm. because they will demand more mm -hmm. and they'll make some strange requests, <laughs> right? So mm -hmm. spouse in that marital relation will see the signs that hey, something is not right, mm -hmm. yeah, because the behavior of the other is not right. Mm -hmm. So they will know, subconsciously you've seen the signs of loss of attraction, preoccupation online, always connected online, hiding things, always want to be by themselves. Then you're feeling anger, irritability when the person come around, yeah? And for, for parents now with younger children, with teenagers, these are the signs you look for. If it is as a parent, you cannot access their devices. So it's half password is locked, mm -hmm. yes? And when you do access it, you go on their laptop, the history, the history is always clear. Mm -hmm. I mean, stick, stick a pin, I don't, you know, right, come okay. in. I, don't want I, want to, I want to interact, <laughs> I want to interact. I'm, I'm coming from here, okay. but um, uh, Shell and, Shell, Shell and Mason, um, well, one of our viewers here, um, we, we need to help. And then Anderson Felix says, bigger, bigger than the addiction is a demonic possession. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, Jenny Plenty says happy hey Jenny from Kariku, you you in Kariku, happy Sabbath to you. We're glad that you can have it. Kimo is there. Um, very, very good. We thank you for joining us tonight. Um, um Chonis Izodo is also watching. Thank you very much, Pastor Izodo. Um uh, one of our viewers is saying um pornography, watching pornography is not wrong. It is managing it. <laughs> Speak to that. I want to before you go. Um, so Frankie, you what, what, about, what I wanted to say was yeah. um, the the question that you, you first asked. First, we have to understand mm -hmm. that we're humans, yeah. and it is biological for us to become sexually um, curious. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the one of the problems is sex talk is a taboo in homes mm -hmm. so there's going to be curiosity of course our hormones we're going to reach a, a certain stage our secondary um, development is going to start happening we want to start asking questions but uh, sex has such been a taboo in homes that it's embarrassing to come and talk to mommy or daddy about it yes. or, so we find out about it with, with our peers we talk about it with our peers you know mm -hmm. and how the peers find out by pornography so they send you a link you know, look up on that. Or sometimes they're not even interested, so they send you a game link, you know? Mm -hmm. But it, it becomes a pornography link or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it stems from that. If we talk to our children about it before they come into contact with it. Mm -hmm. Same from young, from primary school, some people are watching pornography. Mm -hmm. You sit them down, you let them know. Yes, they have a phone, then they have in access to the internet. Mm -hmm. If they have access to the internet, then they have access to, to pornography. They have access to um, sexual explicit whatever it is so sit them talk to them about it let them know what it is mm -hmm. let them know what they're going through let them know that this is normal mm -hmm. this is going to happen but don't make it an issue before it becomes an issue mm -hmm. right they have to know you have to have a driver's license before you drive on the road yes. yeah yeah <laughs> so, 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 so that conversation what frankie is saying is necessary that's sex conversation 
because what pornography and the porn industry is doing is is creating a false reality about sex mm -hmm. and sexual relationship. Right now, we have young people, teenagers, thinking that, okay, when I like this boy, this boy like my girl, and we get together, it's some nude pictures, or let's practice oral sex, mm -hmm. right? Young girls, in order to attract teenage boys to like them, they go and watch porn just for the education so that they could be more attractive to this young boy because he's already crazed in watching pornography. Right? So, so, so there's what? all of that crisis taking place all around. Yeah? And we have to change that perception. Yeah? And we have to tell our young people what sex is. Sex is a beautiful thing God has created. And he has created a safe space for it to happen. Marriage. Where the both the husband and the wife explore and get to know each other in the, in the innocence of the marital bed. Right. Yes? Right. Songs of Solomon speak to it all the time. Yeah. They describe the whole husband and wife relationship. And the porn industry is destroying the purity of right. sex. Right. And Thank, you share. Like Thank you, Shelly. I see you're passionate about and you're, you know, it's a the, the wrong, yes, the wrong, the, um, it's, it's, it's wrong. Douglas, yes. tell us about that, that wrongness about it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's basically... And Fra Frankie, in the meantime, you can get First Corinthians 6, 18, <laughs> um, you know, um, to help um, some of our viewers, First Corinthians 10, 13, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah it has to do with, with this position. Um, if you are actually looking at sexually explicit images and what have you, um, in a sense, basically, that will um, put you into a frame of reference, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, the Bible talks about looking um, and lusting, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. all of those things. So, even if the person might be saying that um, this is not a sin, but the fantasies, the sexual fantasies, the, mm -hmm. the imaginations and all of those things, yeah. by, the, by themselves can be sinful, mm -hmm. you know, because um, you imagining um, having sexual intercourse, mm -hmm. for example, with someone that you, you desire and what have you. So that in itself basically can, can put you in that position where you can become sinful by your thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, by your thoughts, not necessarily your action, because people feel that um, a sexual sin has to take place, you know, when there is sexual intercourse, mm -hmm. and among other things. So um, the Bible, and we, we are actually basing this from the, of from course, the Bible. Of course, of course. Right? The Lord said, if you look at a woman, that's in it, Matthew 5, 28. Definitely. Let me read it. But I say unto you mm -hmm. that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her mm -hmm. had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Definitely. Definitely. All right. So because you see, there is this notion, um, and even among Christians, and Seventh-day Adventist Christians, uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, that if the Bible, there, there isn't a specific text to say that something is wrong. Mm -hmm. You feel that it's a gray matter. Mm -hmm. and, and it gives people basically that green light. Um, some people, I would say, the green light basically to venture mm -hmm. into those areas and what have you. And we have to be very careful mm -hmm. um, with that. You know, there isn't a specific test on every aspect of, of life, mm -hmm. you understand? Know, but the, the Bible overall, you know, mm -hmm. so when it gives a text, that text basically can imply you know, other things as well, and incorporate other things mm -hmm. um, that might be immoral and sinful and what have you. So, but I know there is this argument among a lot of Christians, you know, that there, there isn't a specific thing, or the Bible does not specifically condemn that particular act. So, therefore, you understand me? Mm -hmm. I am at, at liberality, you mm -hmm. understand me, to whether to engage or not engage mm -hmm. in it. And, and that's the ground that some people um, base the argument on, that, you know, it's not sinful, and it's not in morally debasing and what have you. Um, but I, I, after the text, mm -hmm. I would just also want us to get in. I know we have that part of mm -hmm. it too. Um, the church's statement, because yeah, every Adventist Christian needs to know what is the church's statement. I'm talking about the world church mm -hmm. on pornography and so forth. And you have that, you have that the statement from, is there. You want to tell us, right? right. Frankie, right. Frankie okay. or, or, tell, tell us the, the two texts you have. Mm -hmm. Re read them for us. Um, um, which First Corinthians um, six eighteen? Yes, I told you. And First Corinthians um, ten thirteen. Right, so re read them for us. Thanks. Six eighteen. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. Mm -hmm. Every every sin that a man doeth is without the body. Mm -hmm. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Mm -hmm. And ten thirteen. 
There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, for who will suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? All right. mm -hmm. But will, with the temptation also, make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Right. So God will give you this. Yes. But, but the fornication, the word fornication, um, there um, refers to the original um, sexual misconduct or yeah. sexual scenes. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not just having um, sex, as you alluded to, yeah. sexual, mm -hmm. uh, sexual intercourse with somebody, mm -hmm. but um, going to look at um, ex these explicits, and we, you already listed those things it can lead to, mm -hmm. and, 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 and then gratify or satisfy yourself. Mm -hmm. That's not the, how God intended. No. Right? It goes against what God intended for the human human beings, right? Yes. Um, and so it, 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 it is a problem, it is a problem, free for education. So any any sexual misconduct or activities mm -hmm. that is outside of what God prescribed mm -hmm. is certainly a sin and is against what God would would, 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 would condone. Yeah? Yes. Because right. yes. uh, watching pornography, being addicted to it, you masturbate. Masturbate is a self Selfish thing, mm -hmm. selfish act. Mm -hmm. You derive pleasure for yourself alone, mm -hmm. right? God always give. Mm -hmm. He he for God so He gave His only Son. Mm -hmm. Husband and wife relationship. The husband body is the wife own. The wife body is the husband own. Mm -hmm. You see, all throughout the Bible, we speak about denying self mm -hmm. and being of service to others. Mm -hmm. But masturbation and the porn industry is promoting self love, mm -hmm. self act, selfish acts alone. So you are alone satisfied mm -hmm. without regard to anyone's feelings or emotional pain or hurt because of that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. act. Right. And, then, and then, of course, those who use Songs of Solomon, mm -hmm. for example, <laughs> Songs of Solomon, and we have to understand, of course, the context and, and, and so on. But um, it's, it's, it's a book uh, that we read within the confines of, of, of marriage. marriage. Yes, yes. Husband, and wife. The husband and wife expressing, yes. Solomon expressing, he had wives, mm -hmm. you know, but it's expressing <laughs> yourself and so on. To take it upon yourself and use those just to get, we could, we could end up in a lot of trouble and lose behavior and moving from one to the next and those sort of and um and that's what is going on in our world to, to corrupt the mind and, and go lead us against what God um has in store for us you know folks let's 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 take a break here let's take a break we want to come back on the other side let's take a break and have an, a special item of music a special item of music and when we come back we change gear and get into some other matters all right stay tuned and remember to like and share the page it's Adventist Youth Life and we're talking pornography. Lord, 
special music uh, Mario amazing grace we thank you very much a young man using his talent uh, for the Lord and certainly um, we have a very interesting topic if you've just joined us um, we're talking pornography tonight and um, with me we have um, uh, Frankie Noel jr. Right, a young man familiar face on Adventist youth life uh, Shelly and Lewis um, first time <laughs> Adventist Youth Life, right? We're glad to have you, and you're doing well so far, <laughs> very well. You know, you're very, you're doing very well. Um, and then we have, of course, um, our good friend um, in the youth department and our Adventist Youth Life, um, Claude Douglas. Yes, we're very happy to have three of you. All right, let's 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 change gear a little bit. Um, pornography affects the way you view. Other people. I'm reading a statement here, mm -hmm. and you're gonna tell me if you agree with this mm -hmm. statement. If you don't agree, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you a question after that. Mm -hmm. um, it affects the way we you view other people. Um, it especially affects the way young men view young women, mm -hmm. right? So says the statement. Guys who are hooked on porn begin to devalue women, mm -hmm. seeing them only as objects mm -hmm. or playthings. Mm -hmm not as real people with feelings. Mm -hmm. Teenage guys uh, often don't realize that the bodies of models they, they see in pornographic magazines or movies or websites have been surgically enhanced and photographically retouched. <laughs> real human beings don't look like that, so says the statement. Pornography sets us on realistic expectation for what sexuality should be. Yeah. Who says this in mm -hmm. You agree? Or? We had to break that up. Yeah. We had to break that up. Yeah. <laughs> the first part <laughs> in terms of um, there is what we call the objectification, mm -hmm. um, where you start objectifying people. Mm -hmm. So you see that individual basically as an object, a sex mm -hmm. object. Type. Sex object. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't see that, that wholeness mm -hmm. in that woman. You don't see that spiritual and, and social component, mm -hmm. you know, making up that woman. What you see, like some men out there, you know, when they see a woman, basically they see an object, a sex object, mm. you know, and, and that basically, um, as we call it, the objectifying of the individual, and what that can do, um, it, it demeans, you know, it demeans but, um, that particular woman, um, and that in itself can also um, degenerate into, into sexual hostility mm -hmm. um, toward those individuals and so forth. So. Uh, yes, I, I, I agree, you know, Sammy, to a very large extent um, that the perception can change. Mm -hmm. you know, because again, to um, one's beliefs, mm -hmm. you know, basically would be gathered and accumulated based on, on what we do. Mm -hmm. And our beliefs basically will guide, guide our behavior. Mm -hmm. um, so if um, I'm addicted to pornography and um, um, my thoughts, you know, my belief system, are all hooked up on that, mm -hmm. then my whole perception about people, women, whether it's a man that is addicted or a woman that is addicted, 
um, that will help shape that person's perception mm -hmm. of those individuals that they are looking at. Mm -hmm. Yes, because mm -hmm. they only thinking about mm -hmm. satisfying their selfish desires. Definitely, right? And a lot of research has shown when they when they um, interview like persons who are rapists mm -hmm. or serial rapists for that matter, yeah, when they check their historic their background, they spend a lot of time watching pornography, mm -hmm. even addicted to it, mm -hmm. such that. Uh, it becomes so profound in their mind, they become desensitized and they see women as conquests, mm -hmm. how much they could mm -hmm. conquer and right. take advantage of. Right. Yeah? Uh, Frankie, yes. I notice you're shaking your head. You, no, you, I, I disagree, You pass. disagree? I disagree, Pass. Which what do you disagree with? Um, I don't think pornography objectifies people. No, yes, there are certain men that look at females and look at them as objects. But there's a lot of things we have to look at before we could say that. One, the culture. If you look at outside the bubble that we, we put ourselves in, we have dancehall music playing on the radio every day. So if, have you ever listened to one dancehall song? Yes. It's bad. That far more graphic than you could even think about. So and tough. so we, we, want, we block them from that, but then they go on the radio and they hear this explicit type of music. The male dancehall artist talking about the female dancehall artist music on a whole that's how it becomes so sexual and mm -hmm. and back and forth like that but i don't think it it, it has to do with so that. You, you don't think pornography um contributes it's it, it doesn't and I, I don't think so but the same music frankie right objectifies <laughs> women you know take it to the back door you know roll up right went up on her bumper Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, women no, are car parts. That is objective. But, but, right? you're, but that, you're, seeing, you're, <laughs> you're seeing that every day. Do you look at it like that? You're listening to the music. You ever um, watch those um, promotion of carnival, right? They don't normally put it up on the screen in stores and mm -hmm. it's in the airport and so forth. And you're not hearing the song. And all you're seeing is the man whining, mm -hmm. gyrating. All these pornographic. But then you look at um, pose, you look at them whining happening. and what you you see or hear is the music not because we can look at certain things and associate certain things with certain things but you can't just say okay because of this he's going to look at a, a female as in as that but but, but frankly what, frankly, we, what we are saying yeah. what we are saying you mm -hmm. see there are a number of factors and we cannot get away from that mm -hmm. you understand there is a multiplicity of factors that contribute to those things mm -hmm. Right. Um, tonight we are dealing specifically Bono, with, Bono, with Bono, Bono. Yeah. Right. So the, and so the music the, you can't. Yeah, yeah. Other cultural elements. Someone who watches you finish. can have two. Let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. Yeah. Right. There are a number of cultural elements that can contribute to that. Mm -hmm. All right, and so forth. As you rightly said, the music and what have you, and all of those things. All right. Um, and as we know, you know, music has this great influence, mm -hmm. um, and hence the reason why. Um, even if it's jockey, he knows exactly, uh, a good disc jockey knows exactly what, what type of music to play at what yes, time during the day the to move people, you know, yes. in terms of the, the whole um, 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 emotions mm -hmm. and what have you. Um, so um, there is no denying that, that um, there are a number of other, other factors mm -hmm. that will have contributed to that. Mm -hmm. um, but one cannot deny the fact, yeah. you know, and I will hold on to that argument tonight, you know, Sam, that the whole issue of, um, of pornography can lead, not everybody would not have the same effect on every individual. Someone may look at um, pornography and, and, and fantasize and what have you, and may not have that same perception that others would have, mm -hmm. you know, Sammy. So it's not a, a case where um, it's a one size, one size fit all, and it's mm -hmm. very deterministic, mm -hmm. very deterministic in that once you do that, um, automatically your perception. But it what we are saying, time. yeah, what we are saying is that. In some individuals, you know, Sammy, in some individuals, that is likely to happen. Yes. You know, Sammy, that is likely to happen. And it has to do again, too, you know, Sammy, with the individual, mm -hmm. right? Because the influence that it may have on me, mm -hmm. it may not have the same influence on Frankie. Mm -hmm. You know, Sammy? So one may look at it because that person is more emotionally mature, can control himself a little more. So he can look at pornography and then next day, we look at a woman and does not objectify that mm -hmm. particular woman. Mm -hmm. Whereas there are individuals, basically, who might, you understand me, do that without even thinking. 
that they are doing it and so forth. But there, there is this demeaning. I think the, the, the general conference the statement, mm -hmm. you know, the church basically speak to that as well. We, 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 we I think yeah. let, let, let me just add just a yeah. quick thing, quick, right? Quick, mm -hmm. In quick. terms of objectifying, yeah. I just want to add, mm -hmm. you know, objectifying, like this is an object. Mm -hmm. I don't have no really, emo this object don't have no emotions, mm -hmm. right? Don't have feelings. Mm -hmm. Someone who's addicted to pornography, chronic addiction, mm -hmm. right? Don't see the other person who is in a relationship with as someone who is hurting in that relationship because the, the, the constant viewing, the satisfying of self only, they become he totally self-absorbed, mm -hmm. their tolerance level is high in watching it, they become desensitized, yeah. they, they're not sensitive mm -hmm. to another person's emotions, another person's feelings. This person could hurt. Hey, what I'm doing is hurting the individual. No, at that point in the middle of whatever act, they're just satisfying self. So hence that term, objectifying. Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. All right, let's, let, let's move on. Frankie doesn't seem to be convinced, but, um, mm -hmm. I, you know, we, we, we have the information before. Let's, let's move on. We've established already pornography can hurt your, your interpersonal relationship, mm -hmm. right? Um, but do you think pornography can hurt your relationship with God? Well, of course, you know, again, it has to do with one predisposition. Mm -hmm. um, where does that put me? Can I, you know, send me focus on God mm -hmm. while engaging mm -hmm. in pornographic viewing? Mm -hmm. You know, send me? Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about the mind here. Once you tune in, it's like a radio station. Mm -hmm. Once you tune in one thing, you tune out the other. Mm -hmm. Right? So um, in, in, terms of, in terms of the relationship, and that's why there is a saying that a sinning man will stop praying mm -hmm. and a praying man will stop sinning. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, so who are we actually giving ourselves to? Mm -hmm. All right? Because if, if we, we are putting ourselves basically in, in that kind of position, you know, it is difficult. As the Bible, as the Bible rightly says, we cannot serve God and mama. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And these kind of, of, of what I call the base activities, you know, uh, will move us dangerously away from God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Dangerously, I said, away from God because the focus of our mind, mm -hmm. you understand me? We talk about the transformation and the renewing of our mind, mm -hmm. you know, so that when we think, if we go to meditate, mm -hmm. you understand me? In meditating, are we focusing? Can we at the same time simultaneously, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm engaged in some spiritual activity, at the same time simultaneously, I can focus on God. Mm -hmm. You understand me? But if I'm, I'm focusing on an activity, basically, uh, that is uncharacteristic, it un unchristlike, mm -hmm. it would be very difficult, even improbable or impossible for me to focus on God in the very same way. Right. And Thank if I you. should Thank add you. also, mm -hmm. right, putting it within, I say, a Christian marriage context or mm -hmm. a young person growing up in church who is struggling with this pornography, mm -hmm. pornographic addiction, addiction to pornography, um, there's that guilt and shame Definitely. that comes after Definitely. and they, they think, okay, I don't think God could forgive me for this. Mm -hmm. Every time I pray and I say, Lord, help me overcome, please help me. And then mm -hmm. something happens, I see something outside, I go home, all of a sudden I realize I'm home alone, no one is around to see me and you know the devil whispering in your ear. Mm -hmm. Well, just, just to take a peek, okay, I'm going to check my email and before you know it, you go on it, mm -hmm. yes? And then you start to masturbate, everything after it finished now, the shame, that falls on the individual, the guilt. Mm -hmm. How could God forgive me for to keep doing something over and over? How can I deal with this addiction, right? There's a struggle, a spiritual struggle mm -hmm. that is taking place in the individual's mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah? right. thank you. Um, I'm going to interact. Let, let me hear what our online viewers are saying and then we're going to talk to this churchy stand, yeah. the Seventh-day Adventist mm -hmm. church mm -hmm. stand, uh, Ella Douglas, yeah. you want to talk to that yeah, in, a, right. in, a, in a while, you know? Mm -hmm. And then um, we're going to, we gonna we wanna talk before we close up this evening because it's a it's a it, this topic is a broad topic. Yeah, you know, we can broad, we can yeah. talk a yeah. lot about it. We're yeah. trying to yeah. condense a number of things yes. within the time, the limited time we have. Um so maybe you know, I always suggest topics like that, a part one and a part two. 
Nah, you and know, a part three. And a part three, maybe, <laughs> and a part four. <laughs> but you know, but but the whole intention is to 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 educate, to sensitize people as to what is going on, and to speak to those issues mm -hmm. so that we can see how we can help. Because there are many many of you or many persons viewing, or a lot of our young people are wrong and adults too. You know, who are struggling with with with, with this uh, with this with this problem. You know, and we hope that this evening, as we bring it to the full, that you would get some. So we want to talk about the church's position and also how can we help people who might be you know really addicted and so on before we close if we have done that you know with that but let me hear um ricardo says watching pornography is wrong also but, you know we conclude we already close, right um another viewer says we are preoccupied especially with our gadgets and therefore it becomes very diff different for for us to identify the early signs. Yeah, difficult to identify the early signs. All right. Um, another viewer says, timely topic. Happy Sabbath to all. Happy Sabbath to all. All right, Victor, we glad that you are watching us tonight. Uh, uh, Shopee says hello. All right, we very happy that you can join us tonight. We have Mabel watching from the Bronze in USA. Thank you. Glad to have you tonight. Um, remember to like and share the page. Um, Gloria Stewart says, Happy Sabbath. Gloria, how you do? Long time. <laughs> I haven't seen you. I saw your car yesterday, but I didn't see you. <laughs> you know, but good to have you. Sean Philip is also watching. We're very happy to have you uh, there. All right. Um, then we have Adana Harris says, um, she's also um viewing and we're very happy to have you all right let's take let's take what the church's position let's the seventh day adventist church when we do seventh day adventist church and like you have it uh don't pack. tell yes. us yes. you may yes. be able to you know <laughs> not everything yeah, but, but i'll just give part, us give us yeah. um the first part you know um and this is a statement basically that was issued you know by um your know, former president neil, neil c wilson wilson yeah all right um, in 1990 july 5th 1990 mm -hmm. Um, and I will just read out the main part. Um, it said that the um, Seventh day Adventist um, statement on pornography, they describe it as destructive to marital relationships, thus subverting God's design that husband and wife cleave so closely to each other that they become symbolically one flesh. And that's taken from Genesis 2 24. Um, the church also believes that it is demeaning, defining woman. And in some instances, a man not as a spiritual, mental, physical whole, but as a one-dimensional and disposable sex object, hmm. thus depriving her of the worth and the respect that are her due and right as a daughter of God. True. The church also believes that pornography is desensitizing to the viewer or reader, callousing the conscience and perverting the perception, thus producing a depraved person. Mm -hmm. Romans 1, 22 and verse 28. The church also believes that it is exploitative, mm -hmm. pandering to prurience, and basically abusive, thus contrary to the golden rule, which insists that one treat others as one wishes to be treated. Matthew 12, 7, 12. Particularly offensive is child pornography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, said Jesus, if anyone, and I quote, if anyone leads astray even one child who believes in me, he would be better off thrown into the depths of the sea with a millstone hung around his neck. Matthew 18, 6. So basically in a nutshell, and let me just summarize quickly. Um, the church is saying that it is destructive, it is demeaning, it is desensitizing, and it is also exploited. Yes. Thank you very much. And that's yes. that, that the Seventh day Adventist Church's position. You can, mm -hmm. you know, get access to the statement. You can go online on the website and you can get this statement. Mm -hmm. And that's our position, right? Definitely. Um, yes. We are not compromising on this. It's no. it's it's on biblical foundation. Um and, and, and we hold to that. Because um it should be told. I mean we're talking here and people may have all sorts of things, but when we when we sit down and we analyze those things, we see a, a lot of problems are uh, you know, um, coming among our young people 
um, with those things, you know, yes. the sex craze world that we are living in and, and, and people want to make us feel that those things are okay and it's accepted and, and you know, so what? What's the big deal? It's a big deal. Pastor, yes. Pastor let me it's just interject. Let me just interject here. It's a big here. deal. What, what we have happening is a trend in our yes. society today. No amount of intellectualization and legis legislation mm -hmm. could make right what God has denounced you wrong. Right. Okay. And you have that trend that is taking place today, especially as it relates to homosexuality and those things. You know, it, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what argument mm -hmm. man brings forward. Mm -hmm. If God denounces something as bad and immoral, mm -hmm. you understand me? Mm -hmm. Whatever theorizing, mm -hmm. you understand me, that men can formulate and come up with, mm -hmm. that cannot make it right. Mm -hmm. No amount of intellect, intellectualization and rationalization, you know, and reasoning, mm -hmm. you understand, they could make what God has made wrong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And right. we as Christians must take note of this thing. Because I'm saying this to say yeah. that sometimes what happens, even we as Christians, mm -hmm. you know, so, sometimes we kind of get, get caught yeah. into this thing. Mm -hmm. Because people come up when we read, you know, some big theory, mm -hmm. you know, maybe some Harvard graduate come up with, mm -hmm. You understand know, about this thing and, and this thing is not really morally bad because X, Y, Z and so, 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 and what have you. Mm -hmm. But we have to stand on the word of God. Amen. Right. You understand know I me? Mean? Mm -hmm. We must stand on the word of God. And if the word of God says this is not right, mm -hmm. you know, nothing, you understand know, I me? Mean? Let me and if, if thank you. Let me, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, before you add. Let me, let me, yes. let me take, um, um, one of our viewers says, marriage is honorable mm -hmm. and the bed on the file. Mm -hmm. But homongers, adulterers, God will judge. Marriage is um, marriage is sinless and within its confines, the couple seek to satisfy each other. Anything apart from that is wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? Anything apart from that, right? Um, so, right, you, you were saying? I just wanted to add that it is natural for when, if, you, if I like chocolate cake, even though I'm not eating too much of chocolate cake is unhealthy for me. Mm -hmm. I'll rationalize to help justify why I need to eat that chocolate cake mm -hmm. just to continue eating it, mm -hmm. right? And the same concept apply even in the pornography. If it is that we have persons in the Christian context justifying okay to view in it, yet they have rationalized, well, it's okay. A husband and wife could watch it to learn new things. <laughs> Adam and Eve didn't have nothing to view. They had to learn from each other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And in addition, every time we click on watching a pornographic movie and so forth, mm -hmm. we are enabling a greater problem that is happening in society, human trafficking. Mm -hmm. People are being taken from their homes, young women, even young men, mm -hmm. little children, and being used as sex objects and even actors in the same pornographic setting. Mm -hmm. Yes, and every time we watch it, we are enabling other people who are being held against their will, subjected, drug-induced, to do acts just to please persons who want to get their self well, satisfied. So we facilitate the whole process. We facilitate the process. We facilitate the process. We facilitate yeah. This thing has a whole string it's of other things. Definitely. That that is it. So that, yeah. it's, a rude it's a very large topic. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. we have to, when we're choosing those topics in the yeah. future, yeah. As, you, as you rightly said, that yeah. we, we may have to do a series. A series. A because series. Um, what, we, what because we are doing tonight is just scratching the surface yeah. because it's just linked the even into extramarital um, relations yeah. and all of those things. Because this. I'm not saying, you see, you know, you're not just discussing this in a very deterministic way. Yeah. But what we are saying is that it can lead to, mm -hmm. we only say it will mm -hmm. lead to, mm -hmm. but it can lead potential to. Potential is great. Yeah, potential, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right, let, 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 let's answer this one before we have, um, mm -hmm. how can we have somebody is listening out there and is, we, 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 we've mentioned a number of things, they're struggling, you know. <laughs> How can we, how can we as a church, as a family, how can we help them? What can you see to them tonight, Frankie, um, as that means you, to, to help them, you know, um, to get the, the victory, to overcome, you know, and, and so on. Um, what, what would you see to them? A young friend is out there listening. Okay, well, um, not only to the young people, but to the leaders of the church listening as well. Oh, I feel like that's, that's okay. Yeah. This, this is a problem. And we have to realize it can be fixed through education. Mm -hmm. Education. And it's better for them to learn it in the church. Definitely. Than to go there mm -hmm. 
and find out some other way. Yeah. Yes. So let's come together, let's get our information mm -hmm. and let's teach the young people what's right from what's wrong mm -hmm. and let them learn from there. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling with it from a viewer who's listening out there, then talk to somebody about it. Mm -hmm. yes. Make sure it's somebody you trust mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let them know this is an issue that you have mm -hmm. and that you can work from there. So don't try to fight it for, your, for mm -hmm. yourself if you know that you're going to go back there. Mm -hmm. But try to get somebody who can help you mm -hmm. and get the help that you need. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Nice. And if, yes, if yes. just to add further, mm -hmm. yes, for parents, do your homework. Mm -hmm. In order to approach that conversation with your student, with your children, you need to understand what it what it entails, the pornography, the, 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 the challenges of it. Yes? And in it, understanding it, yeah, don't freak out. Mm -hmm. Don't start to like, oh I need to beat you or da da da. You have to go mm -hmm. to the individual, to the son, your daughter and you go with an open mind, mm -hmm. non-judgmental. Mm -hmm. Because remember, this person is doing it in secret. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's a shame factor attached yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. They're feeling embarrassed, they're mm -hmm. feeling shame. Mm -hmm. So you coming and compound that shame with condemnation mm -hmm. won't help the individual Definitely. in overcoming it. Mm -hmm. So we have to be non-judgmental and, and start the dialogue in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a frame of mind to help the person to overcome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, in addition, as Frankie shared, talk to someone, find out, because conversation is needed. Mm -hmm. Even as young as eight year olds and nine, you have to go younger now mm -hmm. to have that sex conversation, because you get in incidences of little children engaging in acts that they see at their own home because mm -hmm. of curtain mm -hmm. party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you have to talk to your children. How to protect themselves and to let one touch them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, these things don't 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 watch it on the don't, don't um, guard the, the what do you call it the devices. Mm -hmm. Put parental control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're supposed to have access as a parent to all their devices. They shouldn't have no password. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to check their web browser. You're supposed to check their history. Everything should be transparent in the home. Yes, so that you'll be able to monitor what it is they're viewing. And if it is you don't know, speak to someone who understands IT. Yeah, and let it explain and check for you. And there's a lot of other ways that you can do to help someone who's struggling. Yeah, and the first step for someone who's struggling is to admit, acknowledge that they have this difficulty and that they want help. Because we could just be talking, talking, and if the individual already convicted in their mind, hey, I'm doing this regardless, mm -hmm. then we just spin it up in mud. But mm -hmm. if it is a person who is desirous of wanting to wanting. change, mm -hmm. to break that habit, that is the first step, and that's a big step, mm -hmm. right? The rest of everything is just support and guidance from then on. Mm -hmm. And replacing that addiction with a healthier habit, yeah, to fill that void, because a void end up happening with if it is that I have custom going three PM after mom go and work, yeah, and log on. I need to do something within that time so I won't be tempted to. So go and engage in sports, get involved in activities in church, join the clubs, start getting yourself involved in a lot of things so that you don't you don't feel that inclination to go at it. Thanks. Hello, Douglas. Mm -hmm. We'd just like to summarize <laughs> <laughs> what, what the both um, predecessors said. Uh -huh. You know, um, and going back to what Frankie alluded to, mm -hmm. that we need to start having conversations, more it's conversations important. in the church mm -hmm. on sex education. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Adventist church in particular, Grenada, um, that's a taboo topic. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't want to discuss, there is never a right time to discuss sex in church. <laughs> uh, we can discuss it in, in Sabbath school, we cannot discuss it in divine hour. Well, if we're going to discuss it in AY, it's still the wrong time. Mm -hmm. So we ask the question, when is the right time to discuss that? Mm -hmm. um, so this is important and, and we need to make a very um, progressive move in that particular area. Um, also to, in terms of the talk therapy, that is critically important. Mm -hmm. Again, but again, confidentiality. Um, it has to be valued, mm -hmm. all right? Um, and this, but the acknowledgement, it's just like an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. If an alcoholic does not admit, admit and acknowledge that he is an alcoholic, 
you can never be on the road to recovery. Mm -hmm. Right? So first and foremost, you need that acknowledgement. You need to admit, look, I have a problem. You know what I mean? I have a problem. David did it. You know what I mean? Have mercy upon me, oh God. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, blot out. He said, blot out. You know what I mean? Purge me. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is, you have, you have the Davidian, I want to call it a Davidian attitude. Mm -hmm. You must have that Davidian attitude mm -hmm. going before God and asking Him. You understand me? Because um, only God, in, only God yeah. you understand me? Yeah, He will use men mm -hmm. as instruments to help you. Mm -hmm. You understand me? But the bottom line is God. God okay. You understand me? So, individual who are struggling with this, turn to God. And I know He can transform your mind. And once He transforms your mind, mm -hmm. you understand me? then that mind basically will be diverted away from this. And then he will cause you know, to engage you know, in, in, in other activities, alternative mm -hmm. activities that will take you away from this. Mm -hmm. But bottom line is God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fine. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Folks, thank you very much. Um, tonight, um, I, I, I hope um, our producers, of mm -hmm. course, uh, I know they are listening, um, a part two is needed. <laughs> a real part two is needed, and, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. part two is usually soon. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's lots of and a lot of comments came that we weren't able to, you know, get into all of these comments and so. But the comments are online; they are posted there. Then you can see them after. You can read. You can mm -hmm. interface and so on. But we, we we trust by the grace of God that um just raising this topic mm -hmm. and this forum here mm -hmm. and and sharing um can you know help us. Um, to be uh, more knowledgeable mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know we can begin some sort of conversation on this Definitely. on this problem Definitely. it is affecting mm -hmm. um, um, with our young people and of course adults too mm -hmm. <laughs> but we are specifically talking to our young and based on the statistics we shared and for some of the examples you gave um, young children Yes. Young children, they are exposed. It's in their face. Yeah. They, 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 it's, it's all over. Mm -hmm. So we cannot, we cannot, we cannot, you know, mm -hmm. say well we can't talk about it and even because they are going to continue and then you know they're going to get into a lot of problems, you know. Mm -hmm. But as was said, um, the power of God is able to break any addiction. Definitely, Amen. the power of God is able mm -hmm. um, to break um, any addiction. The text we use from Corinthians says that God is able to give us, you yes. know, yes. That, 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 that power to overcome Amen. Um, when we are tempted. It's a temptation, but we don't have yes. to yield to the to temptation. The temptation. Exactly. Yeah? Mm. Power of God mm. is, 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 is able. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. Shanti, thank you very much, you know. <laughs> and um, um, I, I know you, I know you, 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 you. You, you think outside of the box and you have, you know, and, 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 and so on. You and that's know. good. And if that's we, good. Yeah, if we, if we let go, Frankie, you know. <laughs> that's good. Uh, Shelly, you did well for your first time tonight. <laughs> your first time tonight. Uh, you, you look like you were on this program all the time. Yeah, that's <laughs> sure. That's that the way she conducted you things so good. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, well, of course, the veteran, Claude Douglas, you know, you throw him anyway and he will, you know, he will just grow and shine, you know. Mm. But we're very happy that you can take your time, busy time, hard walking to mm -hmm. come mm -hmm. come by on a friday evening mm -hmm. and share with us you know and we will be calling you we'll be calling anytime, you anytime and that's our resource anytime. Anytime. Shelly, we thank anytime. you very much frankie thank mm -hmm. you very much oh, all non viewers thank you very much um for staying with us thank you for the comments that you shared we had a little bit of technical um hitch in the beginning but thank god we we, we came through we came through. and i, I believe that, that 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 somebody mm -hmm. had to be here this program tonight somebody had to be delivered tonight you know yes, yes. And, and the evil one mm -hmm. was trying his best not to make this happen but thanks be to god Amen. it happened Amen. and um we'll continue by the grace of god thank you very much that was adventist youth life and before we leave we want to say a special prayer tonight mm -hmm. that god will just bless and god will just give each one of us the power to overcome and not to yield to temptation let us pray father in heaven Thank you very much for being with us tonight on this program. Thank you for uh, holding up uh, the system and whatever the technical problem was for just rectifying it for us. We give you the praise. Thank you for our panelists who've come by. And we pray, God, that you continue to bless them as they share. Those who are viewed uh, we and shared, we thank you for them also. And Lord, if there is somebody out there who might be struggling, somebody addicted, somebody might have had their, maybe their first look uh, 
um, a few days ago, Lord, we pray that you apply your grace oh, and yes. your power Thank to them you, Lord. and help them to know that there is you have better plans for them. There is something better, more powerful than this that you are willing to give them, the Heavenly Father. We pray that you continue to guide and help our young people. And even as we go throughout the Sabbath day, we pray, God, that you help us to worship you uh, as you deserve to be worshipped. We give you the praise, we give you the thanks for hearing and answering us tonight. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Until next week, God bless you. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll meet for another mm -hmm. episode of Adventist Youth Life. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. God bless. Mm -hmm. to trust and love you more.